this time on the Families Matter Most podcast. Would you say you're a positive person? And if so, how did you get there? What do you do? How do you be positive? Because there's lots of people that I know want to be more positive and they're saying, Jen, how? I want to be positive, but I don't know how. Tell me how to be positive. In this podcast, we talk about it. Have a listen and let me know what you think. Every time Jen Dean speaks, I can see hope, knowledge, expertise, wisdom, and love. When Jen Dean speaks about parenting, we make sure that we are there to listen because we know we will get valuable advice. Families Matter Most with Jen Dean. She doesn't just give skills for us to be better parents, but she teaches us how to reach our children's hearts. And at the end of the day, that's what truly matters. You want to be more positive. I know you do. Because everybody always wants to be more positive. How many times have you decided, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to think happy thoughts. I'm just going to be positive somehow. Just unicorn dust and fairyland. Or I'm just going to be positive. Well, today I'm going to show you how to actually do that. It's Jen. I'm a family coach with Families Matter Most. I help parents take care of themselves and take care of their kids. So whether it's a parenting topic, it's a health and wellness topic, it's learning how to take care of yourself, I can help you with that. Today, we're gonna talk about being more positive for real, for real, how do we do it? Here's an example, you're home with your kids. You love being home with your kids, but you also feel like you're missing out on opportunities. Maybe it's a mat leave, maybe it's your choice, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, and you love, you. Deep down, you really do love, you feel called to be with your kids right now. But you also feel like, man, I'm missing out. I'm missing out on opportunities. These other people are leveling up in their career. These other people are going back to school. They're creating new things. This person's writing a book. This person's traveling. It can feel like, ah, oh, man, this is so hard and I'm so tired. This is never ending and it's so much work and I'm exhausted. <laughs> have you been there? Of course you have. Nobody appreciates me. I'm terrible at this. I'm actually no good at this and I don't even know if I like this. I'm a bad mom. <laughs> have you been there? <laughs> I bet you have. I bet you have and it's completely normal. But how do we get out of that? I call that like a negative thought spiral where it just it just keeps going and then there's more and then there's more and then one of your kid is crying and then you feel like, oh, this is so hard and you try to do something right and it's not. And then one of your kids says, man, I wish I had a new family. And you're like, you know what? Sometimes so do I. <laughs> and then the work is piling up and the problem is, the work that you do at home, it's not one and done. You can't check off a box. There's no benchmark. There's no performance review. You just empty the dishwasher and then there's more dirty dishes. You do the laundry and there's more dirty laundry. You clean something up and then the kids get in there and knock it all down. It feels like it's never ending, thankless, tireless work that we do all the time. Been there, 100% been there. So it's normal, but how do we pull ourselves out of that? That I'm a horrible parent. I don't even know if I'm any good at this. <laughs> I don't know that I like this. What am I doing wrong? I want you to notice those thoughts and how do they make you feel? How do your thoughts make you feel? When I'm working with clients, we break this down a little bit, a little bit deeper, but I want you to pay attention to that because we forget our thoughts and our feelings feel like they're intertwined, that they're all together. And I'll ask someone, what do you think about this? And they'll say, well, I'm angry. Oh, wait, that's a feeling. That's not a thought, right? I'll say, what do you, how do you feel about this? And you'll say, well, I think that, oh, really? That's a thought. It's easy for us to get those mixed up because they happen so quickly and it feels like we don't have control over either, over our thoughts or our feelings. But I promise you, we have way more control than what we realize. Notice the thoughts and then notice how the thoughts make you feel. Our thoughts create our feelings. Hmm. Those thoughts that you're having, this is so hard. I'm so exhausted. 
It never gets easier. It's always going to be this hard. I don't know what I'm doing. I wish I was somewhere else. I think I hate this. (laughs) All of those thoughts, notice how they make you feel. They make you feel defeated. They make you feel hopeless. They make you feel like a failure. Yeah. Of course, I want you to to pause here for a moment and I want you to think, no wonder I'm so exhausted. No wonder, no wonder I feel hopeless. Anybody who had those thoughts would feel defeated. Anybody who has those thoughts feels unmotivated. It's not just you, it's the thoughts. Anybody who has those thoughts, everything feels harder. Everything does. You start dreading even the the easier tasks. You start dreading simple tasks. It's just, oh, the to-do list, it just becomes this huge beast. You procrastinate because you're just dreading it. You're not motivated. It's hopeless. It's never going to change. It's always going to be this way. When you do have to do the tasks, notice they all take longer, right? They're all harder than what you think. They seem just like, oh. Everything is just a drag and everything just takes more energy. I want you to go back to those thoughts and have some grace for yourself. Anyone who had those thoughts would feel dread. Anyone who has those thoughts is going to feel unmotivated and just getting them done, just getting through their day is going to be harder. So I guess that's the bad news is is maybe... Maybe you've been having those thoughts and it's making things harder. The good news is you can change your mind. You can change your mind. How do those thoughts feel? They feel awful. They feel terrible. They feel gross. I don't like them at all. How do they feel? Terrible. I hate them. They make me feel awful, exhausted. Let's get some new thoughts. Let's change our mind. So here's a way to do it. For an example, ask yourself, could someone else feel differently? So let's say you're home with the kids, everything's going wrong, you, you had an idea of what you wanted to accomplish that day, nothing's happening, maybe a kid threw up, and so one of your children is now sick and you're thinking, the good side of you is like, oh my poor baby, and the bad, <laughs> bad side of you, the human side of you, is saying, oh now what? Now are we all gonna get sick and I'm gonna be scrubbing puke off of carpets and oh, here we go. Now it's going to be days of no sleep and maybe I'm going to get sick too, right? All of those thoughts are there. But I want you to step back and say, okay, these thoughts are making me feel horrible. Is there any other thought I could have? Any other thought, for example, right? Could someone else be in my shoes and feel differently? Could someone else be in my shoes and think differently? Someone else could be in my shoes and think, thank goodness we're home. We're not on a holiday. We're not traveling. I don't, I can, I can cancel everything on my schedule. We're going to plan to stay home for the next three days and just, just bunker down and take it easy. Thank goodness that I can do that. We can just have a real slow day and maybe that would help, right? And sure, I'm not excited at the prospect of my family getting sick, but but at least I'm not trying to do it in addition to everything else. I'm just, okay, we're going to slow down here. Let's talk about like regular life. Let's just say there's, there's regular life and it's busy and your kids get up early and they want to have fun and they love you. And some parts of it are great. And some parts of it are just really long days and you're counting down the hours till bedtime. And let's say you have those thoughts, like I'm so tired. It's always going to be this hard. My kids don't listen to me. I'm not a good mom. I'm not very good at this parenting thing. I'm, I'm kind of failing at everything. Stop. Step back a little bit and ask yourself, right? Ask yourself, could someone else think differently? Could someone else think differently? Is there a kinder way I can think about it? This is called reframing. (laughs) And what's great about it is it means that you're going to start to see something from a different perspective. It's actually like you're stepping back. You're not taking it as personal. And you're asking yourself, wait a minute, is there another way that I can think about it? So the rule of reframing is, is that we are going to see something from a different perspective with the goal 
of breaking a cycle of harmful thoughts. So there you go. This is an emotionally intelligent technique in psychology. I am not a psychologist, but this reframing tool, this strategy has been really helpful for me. And I know with lots of clients that I've worked with. So try this in the middle of whatever life is doing, stop, pause, step back and ask yourself, huh, could someone else be in my situation and think differently? Is there another way I could think about this? And the answer is yes. Even, even in the hard days, even when you're counting down the hours till bedtime, you could ask yourself this question. And you know what? Someone else in my position could choose to stop and enjoy the journey. Someone else in my position could choose to stop and say, you know what, this is hard, but I get to sit on the floor and play with Lego with my kids. This is really tough, but I'm gonna have grace for myself and and just be kind. And I'm not gonna feel bad and judge myself and be critical for everything that I'm doing wrong. I'm gonna tell myself I'm doing the best that I can. Someone else in my situation could say, I'm a good mom. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time, but I try. When I do make mistakes, I repair. I ask forgiveness. I apologize. I work on getting better. I'm trying. I'm a good mom. I'm doing the best that I can. I love my kids. I want to be the best mom that I can for them. And that means making mistakes sometimes and repairing when I do. Already, doesn't that feel better? How do those thoughts make you feel? (laughs) They make you feel better. They feel a little hopeful, not hopeless. Do you feel a little bit motivated to do something, to start, to try, to try again, to make it right when you fail? It's motivating. Yeah, I can do this. I do have my own back. I am working on it. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. Those thoughts make you feel positive. So if you want to be a positive person, what you need to do instead of like faking it, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, this is fine. You actually need to notice those negative thoughts, notice how they make you feel and then stop it there and say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. There's another way to think about this. I'm not going to keep beating myself up. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm going to be kind to myself. I'm going to speak kindly to other people and to myself. And that means having grace. And you'll notice when you do that, you have more hope. You're not dreading. You're not procrastinating as much. Uh, You are more motivated. Yeah. And when you do make a mistake, you're not beating yourself up for hours and hours about it. You can let it go. You can repair, make it right, own it, take responsibility, learn and grow and move on. I hope this encourages you to do the real work of becoming positive, not the fake, like I'm just going to pretend that I'm positive, the fake it till you make it. I feel like there's a place for that. I, I get that. But I also want you to be doing the work on the inside. Notice how your thoughts make you feel and then take those thoughts captive. You can change them. You can change them. Ask yourself, how do I want to feel? What thoughts do I need to think in order to feel that way. (laughs) I sound like a Dr. Seuss book. (laughs) What thoughts do I need to think? What thoughts did you thunk? (laughs) So choose your thoughts, choose positive thoughts. You will still get your work done. You don't have to beat yourself up into being productive. Try this out, let me know how it goes. And if you feel like you want someone to walk you home, you want someone to be at your side as you're learning a whole new way, of looking at life, reach out. Let's have a strategy call and talk about it. Thanks for listening to the Families Matter Most podcast with Jen Dean, part of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. If you are interested in contacting Jen for one-on-one parent coaching, for speaking engagements, or just to get a little more information, please visit our website, familiesmattermost.com.